Right, although this tutorial is called Selective Sharpening, it is as much about using the layer mask as it is about sharpening, and you'll see that as we go through the tutorial. This is an image I took in my garden of a helibore. And if I zoom into 100%, the edges here um, are not terribly punchy. They're not out of focus, but they're just a little bit what I'd call soft. They need a bit more impact. And this is an ideal... Um, candidate for digital sharpening and when I talk about digital sharpening we're not actually sharpening the image we're just creating an illusion of sharpness the only way to get a sharp image is to focus something properly in the camera before you release the shutter um, anything else um, is a waste of time you cannot sharpen something that's out of focus by digital editing but you can make the edges more punchy which is what I want to do with this image here now I could just go to filter, sharpen and either unsharp mask or smart sharpen depending on your preference and what version of Photoshop you've got. And then I could just whack the sharpen it, sharpness up like this. And yes that's given us a nice sharp contrasty punchy edge here. But look what it's done to the rest of the image. It's made it really quite harsh because it's picked out all the bits of noise in the image and there's always a certain amount of noise in, in an image. Um, and, and the overall effect is just it's horrible, I just don't like that at all. So we'll cancel that. Instead what I'm going to do is going to apply our changes to a layer, a duplicate layer. So you can either do that by right clicking on the layer and selecting duplicate layer or my preferred method is to use the keyboard shortcut of Control J. Now any changes we make to this layer won't affect the background layer whatsoever and so it's totally non-destructive and we only apply the changes permanently when we flatten the layer and save it. So now I can go back to my sorry, filter, sharpen, smart sharpen and this time I can accept that 200% even though as I said I don't particularly like the effect. We can fix the uh, harshness in this image by using a layer mask and to get a layer mask Go to the bottom of the layers palette where you've got all these little icons down here. And next to the FX icon, or it might be just an F icon if you've got an older version of Photoshop, you've got an icon which is a square with a little white circle in the centre of it. And if you hover over it, you get a little pop-up box saying add layer mask. Click on that and you'll get this white thumbnail appear next to your thumbnail image in the active layer. By default it is active and you can tell it's active because it's got a little border around it. If you click on the thumbnail and make the thumbnail active, the border switches to the thumbnail. But as we're going to be working on the layer mask, we want the layer mask active. So click back on the layer mask and make sure you've got the border around it. Right, by default the layer mask is white, which means it's not doing anything at all. And you can see everything on this layer is as it was when I created the layer, i.e. sharp or over sharpened in this case. What the layer mask does is it allows you to paint out areas that you want to hide from this layer. But as we want to hide most of this layer and only show the, the edges that we want to expose, I'm going to fill this layer with black. So with the layer mask active, let's get my paint bucket tool and just click anywhere in the main window. And now this layer mask has gone black and it's effectively disabled the layer completely, it's turned everything off. And if I disable the layer mask by going shift and clicking on the layer mask, you see this little red cross appears on the layer mask and the layer is switched back on again. So I'll shift click, click on the layer mask again because we want the layer mask active. Okay, so now to actually bring back the bits that I want on this particular layer, I paint on it in white. So I take a, a paintbrush and make sure the paintbrush is nice and soft, which it is, and yeah, it's about the right size, I don't want anything too big. And I just paint over the edge, making sure, of course, that your paintbrush is in white and not black, because it, that's better. Okay, just paint over the edge, and now you can see this sharpening being applied as I paint. Okay, so just go around all the edges there that should be in focus. Don't bother going around any edges like up here 
that aren't in focus because there's no point trying to bring those back into focus they're not supposed to be in focus and you'll just make a mess but just go around just go around the the sharp edges to highlight them more because some here this might take a little bit of time I might have to fast forward through some of this okay Mindful that I've only got 10 minutes on this YouTube vid. Okay, some of these stamens, not all of these stamens are in the focal range, so I only concentrate on a few of them and just pick out these little. Here, this is on the edge of this petal down there. Okay, what I'll do for now, I'll maybe just take out these ones. Okay, right now, um, if I turn this layer on and off, you'll see the before and the after. Okay, and you'll see these little white lines that have appeared in this layer mask here where I've painted. Right, now this is still a little bit harsh for my liking, but the thing with the layers is you can actually fade the layer itself. So I'm going to bring the opacity slider down here to fade the effect a little bit. And I'll bring it down to yeah, about 70, that'll do. Okay, there, now. It's before, and there's an after. Okay. And now all I need to do is to flatten the image, and there, and I can save that now as a JPEG. For more tips and tutorials on using Photoshop, why not visit my website at www.sally-jane.co.uk.